Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing? This is again Steven, and I am out for the Movember Challenge Move in November, the 60 mile challenge with my teammates. Um, I have not been doing a lot of walking, so from now until the end of November, I have, let's see, five days and 30 miles, so technically six miles a day, um, which isn't going to be too bad, I hope, because I have the four-day weekend because of the holiday, so I am out. It is raining. My socks are a little bit wet um, because the ground is wet and getting into my shoes, so I will suck it up and keep moving and think about what to say next. So I'm about 30 minutes into my walk and just about a mile and a half. So if I did that back, it would be three. So hopefully it does not pour because that would suck. Um, yeah, but still kind of thinking about what to talk about. So the premise again of November move for November or during November is for men's health and suicide prevention. And so when I was talking with one of my best friends, Bobby, who is on the team and rocking, getting his miles in, he talked about even earlier that he didn't think a lot of people would donate or support this cause in terms of you know men's health versus women's health as he did a challenge in October I believe it was for breast cancer and a lot of people donated and were really supportive and so I don't know maybe just a question I'll ask you all is that what do you think keeps people from donating for men's health causes versus women's health causes. Um, you know, yes, we are in the pandemic and there's COVID and there's a lot of uncertainty and anxiety going around. And yet, if my best friend Bobby could get donations for women's health in October, then is there a difference between where we are now or is it kind of, again, on that gender binary of men and women? And yeah, all those kinds of things. And so I guess the other thing that I'll touch upon too is the suicide prevention part. Oftentimes, you know, you've been hearing the word suicide, thinking about it, talking about it, can be extremely scary, can be terrifying for the person who's having the thoughts of suicide and thinking about killing themselves, as well as for the person who, you know, maybe the caregiver, the friend, the family member, uh, maybe even the professional, you know, because uh, suicide prevention is, is something that takes time to build skill and being prepared to talk about. Um, and one of the things that I do know is that talking about suicide does not put the idea in the person's head. And there's a good chance that they have already been thinking about suicide for a really long time, even if it's for a month or a year. It's a long time to think about, even if it's just for a month. So by you asking and talking about suicide, it is a form of intervention. It is a form of prevention because you're allowing them to talk about it. And again, yes, that's scary for, for them to acknowledge it and then for us to, to ask and confront about it. Um, and yeah, so I guess uh, I'll leave that there for now and that saying that talking about suicide is a preventative and intervention that is and can bring relief to the person having thoughts of suicide. You know, we don't have a magic wand. We can't make those thoughts go away. We can't make them feel better. 
Um, and yet, sometimes being that person who is willing to talk about it or ask about it um, can help that person feel less anxious and feel a little bit more relieved that finally someone is talking to them about it and not shutting the conversation down, not pushing them to see a professional, you know, yes, if they have access to insurance or they can afford it, great. Um, but sometimes people don't have access and are unable to afford treatment or therapy or counseling, um, support groups and all that stuff. So, and with that said, support groups usually don't cost and sometimes they are free and sometimes they do charge. But again, when we think about access to care, um, not everyone has that. And as I turn around, because there is a huge puddle and I do not have rain boots or anything on, I'm going back the other way because my socks are already wet and I don't want them to be drenched. All right, now jumping back and they're talking about suicide a little bit more is that, yeah, sometimes it's just nice to be able to get things off your chest, you know? You know, so if you, if you have that gut feeling, maybe they're talking about suicide, maybe they're ma making hints, maybe something doesn't feel right. You get a gut feeling that mm, something, something's up, you know, it's not your job to fix them. It's not your job to make them feel better, but although it makes us uncomfortable to sit in that space, because we might feel like we want to fix it. We want to make that pain go away. Sometimes just allowing it to be can be healing, right? Like if someone talks to you about having thoughts of suicide, if you tell them don't have those thoughts, you have so much to live for, those can minimize how they're feeling and make them feel guilty. And then therefore, in a sense, makes them feel worse. Um, and you know, it takes, takes time, it takes skill to, to practice, you know, how to talk about suicide, how to, how to listen, you know, not just, you know, shake your head and nod, like those are helpful, but more about being there for them and not trying to problem solve or, you know, give advice and just listen to what they have to say. And sometimes just saying, you know, I, I really don't know what to say. Thank you for sharing. Uh, it sounds like you're going through a lot of pain right now and you need some support. And maybe the best thing to do is to call someone later. You know, maybe we can figure things out together, be supportive, directing them to resources if that's what they want. Maybe they just want to talk um, and then, you know, provide support because more times than not, again, not everyone's going to have access to therapy or friends and support. Sometimes people don't have those things. Um, so it's more about what can we do to, to just be there for the person. And again, sometimes that, that can be really helpful.